Holden. Uh, I have a, another question. Yeah. Um, I've recently only discovered the eye, I guess, and it's been intriguing, and I'll, I'll explore it further. But the thing I've noticed is a disconnection between the eye and the mind, and I'm wondering how the eye influences the mind, you know, or if there is a, this, at the moment, there's a disconnection. I mean, it's like a nothingness. There's Can you no just to um, clarify words? Can you tell me what you mean by the eye? Uh, the nothing. The nothing. So, okay. meditating, there's with no thought or stepping into just a singular singularity. Yeah. It's hard to describe. Yeah. So, um, but it's, I noticed it there um, for um, you know, brief moments, I guess. But it, it's, it seems to be completely disconnected. Like, it doesn't care, it doesn't take knowledge. Right? It's just there. So. Yeah. What's the point of it? Why? Why? How do you use it? I yeah. guess it's still the mind. Yeah, that's 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 good. Yeah. So there's two things that happen there. So when we're awakening, what happens is so the, at the base of everything there is nothingness. So my palm is going to be nothingness. So at the base there is this no thingness, and that's everything. The nothingness isn't separate from everything. There weren't that. Emptiness is fullness, and fullness is emptiness. It's one and the same thing. Um, and what happens is we've been identified with this person that's in front of it, like this, this personal self. And then what happens is a division of our mind, in part of awakening, turns around and looks at that nothingness. And it thinks that it's experienced something. It hasn't really experienced something. But it's also still the mind that's registering nothingness. And it's a really profound point. And it's what, when you see that, it's like really beautiful and really like amazing. But it's still a division of the mind. There's still the person there that's suffering on some level. And it's still your mind that recognizes it. But really, it's that nothingness is looking at the person. You can never look at nothingness. Nothingness is looking at the person. It's not the person that owns it. So in, in the nothingness realization, you've only realized half of it. The other half is love. So Nisigadatta Maharaj, he says, to know I'm nothing is wisdom, to know I'm everything is love, and in between my life resides. And when he says in between, he means the human part. So, so yeah. But the other side is this amnes. So you could say, that's the, I mean, I would call it totally different words, but we could just for fun say the I, and then the amnes is everything. So let me explain to you what I mean by amnes. And I don't normally call it amnes, I'd call it beingness or aliveness. So um, this is harder to talk about because you're so identified with being it. So I think I'm going to. Dun, 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 go dun, dun. I think I'm going to tell a story of what happened to me to try and make this more apparent. So, have you heard of the I am teaching, like Nisargadatta Maharaja? Yeah. Well, probably a bit. Yeah. So there is this amnes side. So you get teachers that teach about going into consciousness, and then you get teachers that teach about going into the I am. And what is the I am, or aliveness, or presence? So, you know inside of yourself, even though there is no inside ultimately, but we're just going to say this to try to point you to something, there's always been a sense of being alive. So when you were three years old, it's the same sense of being alive as now. It's the sense of being that this is. And it's prior to your age, your body, what you look like. There's always this sense of being that this is happening. You might not be able to detect what that is, it might be too confusing. But that sense of beingness is always identified with me being a person. And it feels like it's inside here. But that sense of being alive, the being, is actually everything. It's the everything part of the teaching, it's love. And, uh, Ramana Maharshi, I think, I mean, I'm just interpreting what they say, and it might not be the real way it is of what they meant, but. For me, he used to say that, it, or it, that the, the beingness originates in the left side of the heart. It's like love. And some 
teachers say that beingness, this is a feeling of love, and some people say it's, it's no feeling, it's not a feeling, it's beyond feeling. But it doesn't really matter to me whether you call it a feeling or not, it's love. Everything is love. And sometimes when you have the awakenings, you just have the emptiness without the love, which is incredibly scary sometimes. And sometimes you have the love experience awakening. And these are those spiritual people you'll see walking around where they're like, everything is love, and they're all from the heart. And they don't know the wisdom side, the nothing side. And they both come together in perfect harmony. And to know one, you have to truly know the other. Because to truly love is to not hold on to anything. And the only way you can not hold on to anything is to know that you're nothing. So they come together. Like true love, unconditioned love, can only come in this moment. This is so great. I love talking about this. this I love love. <laughs> so this is the first part that I woke up to in this form. Maybe in other lives I woke up to other lives <coughs> first. And, um, and I had it when I was a teenager. And it had quite an effect on my life. So I did this thing, which is slightly embarrassing to tell everyone about, but I've told it many times, so it's on the internet, so everyone knows. Um, was when I was about 12 or 13, all my friends were talking about falling in love and boyfriends and all these things. And, um, and I wanted a boyfriend as well. So, or a girlfriend actually, I was a bit going over where I wasn't quite sure which one. I could sometimes be a girlfriend, sometimes be a boyfriend. But mostly it was a boyfriend, I think. And, and, um, and I used to put on earphones, my mum had this big sound system and I put on earphones and I put on these CDs or cassettes that were really like romantic love songs like and I don't know why I did this like how I developed this but it was like a meditation that I did but I didn't even know I was doing that so I would um put on something like Jack Jones or Michael Ball you know from the sound of music like love love conquers everything I think it's oh love changes everything like really romantic songs and, um, and I would lay down and I would imagine having the perfect boyfriend and I'd imagine like meeting him and all the details to it, like where I'd meet him, what he would look like, what he would make me feel like, what he would say, uh, where we'd go. And I would imagine it more and more. And, um, and I even got to the stage, this is embarrassing, where I would put all the cushions around me and pretend that he was hugging me. <laughs> but I'd be like all cocooned. And what would happen is I'd begin to radiate with love. Like, I would imagine it so much that I radiated more and more with love. And then, finally, I would stop imagining the boyfriend. Like, it was like an explosion would happen. I'd get into this place where there was just love. And I didn't even need to imagine him. It was just like immense love would take over all my body. And I would just lay there for God knows how long having love. And this had a huge effect on me because afterwards I realized that I could feel that love that I wanted from a boyfriend without having a boyfriend. And I could feel it without even imagining the boyfriend. Like, it could just happen. I didn't even need to imagine him. It would just be there. And then I began to evoke this state, just listening to music. A song would come into the car. And that also, it began to make me realize that that state was better than any experience. Like, so it was actually better than going to the movie or going to, I don't know, the ice cream shop. That that was actually fundamentally what I wanted, which affected my relationships with men because I knew before going into a relationship that I internally could experience the love that I wanted. And it also made me feel a bit disappointed because the relationship never quite lived up to it. It may be the first couple of dates or the first kiss, it had like these fireworks and <coughs> But then it quickly, rapidly lost it, and I didn't feel this in loveness. What happened to me is that I longed for this in everything, this love. Like, so everything quickly became redundant to me. I knew that it wasn't in a career. I knew it wasn't in all these things that I imagined. I knew it was in my being in some way. And when I heard Buddhism, so that was the first access to it, and when they talked about being in the moment, it sent off fireworks in my heart so it talked to me like the poetry and then in Buddhism I kind of got this idea that I had to not get that love that I had to push it away like Buddhism was very serious but then there was this beautiful moment in Buddhism where I woke up and realized that everything could be about seeking for that love 
My whole life had been about finding that love and seeking that love. I also began to realise through my spiritual path that that love was my essence. It was always vibrating there in the background and it wasn't something that could be attained. It was an even state that I was inducing. It was a natural way of being and it was always there and always accessible. Everywhere I went, there was this I am, this love, everywhere. And it was my intimate most sense of being. It's just that sometimes it was more obvious and sometimes it was just vibrating gently in the bound. And it wasn't actually dependent on objects. I also began to realise through many experiences that that was the love that I seeked in relationships and that I could only truly love another human when I was present. Like I'm putting it into dualistic language, like saying I could only truly love them when I was present. But only in the moment, I couldn't love someone in time. I could only love them here. And I could see how all these romantic dates or romantic words or, or, or relationships just become present. So telling each other these magical stories about setting up a life together, which is magical, and why I do that? But I was actually using it to try to come present. And it was actually putting me into present. It wasn't actually the relationship. It wasn't actually them that was giving me presence. I was using them in order to be present. They were reminding me of this love of what I was. And that I could only actually truly be in love with my partner when I was here. And that was a beautiful expression to see someone here. Because in seeing someone here, they suddenly become that limitless possibility, that boundless possibility. It's really special, really beautiful. It's the only time for someone. And you actually fall out of love with someone because you build an identity in time with them and you begin to love them in time. And that's when you begin to have problems and fall out of love. But you can love someone this whole life per time, one person, you see them here. It doesn't mean that's your destiny. Your destiny might be to have many partners. But it also, you can have one partner and it can be totally fresh every time, like that first moment, if you see them as infinite possibilities. If you don't begin to put on an identity to them, you see them as the mystery of this. But it's your nature, it's your essence, it's your heart. And that's the I am. That's the other side to the nothingness and they say I mean in traditional spirituality I'm not so good at the traditional stuff but they say that the nothingness is the masculine and the I am the everything is the feminine and this is why I always get a little bit offended when people say nothing is the source actually in Buddhism they say emptiness is form and form is emptiness it's not that nothing is the source everything is also the source everything is that nothingness and nothingness is that everything <coughs> They come together, they're the lovers. It's like, this is Tantra, this is, like, this is why our life, why this formed in opposites. Because you have these two sides, like the yin and yang. You can see how all of these things fit together. Like this yin and yang, and you have this little dot in each one of them. It's so beautiful. And then you have these, these opposite sexes that come together and mate and create new life. It's all metaphors and beautiful of how this is actually working. And then we spend our life together and we hate each other because we go into time and we see each other in time. You love someone when you know your heart. So that's the I am side. And you might know it from music, from art, from beautiful sunsets. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I think I said lots of sucky love songs for me then. Sorry? Lots of uh, love songs for me. <laughs> yeah. That might work. Bajangs also might work. <laughs> we put it as a spiritual concept. A bit of... um. Om Madi Padme Hom. Nothing like a bit of love to that. What's the other one that I really like? There's another one. That is very beautiful. It's that magic. It's when you see magic in life, it brings you present. That's your essence. That's the I am side. Yeah, this is why they do bad gens. It's, it all makes sense when you put it all together, like why, <coughs> why they, um, ah, <coughs> oh, this one, I don't know how to say that one. It reads to me, Eek Om Ka Sat Nam. I don't think that's how you say it. <laughs> I mean, that's just, 
beauty, that's your heart. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, she says it's slightly different. I think it's a bajan. I don't know what kirtan is in a bajan. Somebody in this room will tell you, I'm sure. <laughs> But you, that's, you can hear it in art, in music, and you think it's the art, you think it's the music, you think it's the lover, but it's actually it's reminding you of your heart. It's, you're dropping out of time, you're suddenly like, you see the beautiful sunset and you're just in, you're here, and then there's love. But not all teachers teach this, I realise. Some teachers teach peace of mind and other things, and maybe they talk about different things, but that's what I talk about. And you know, everyone's attracted to their own path. And nobody's wrong. It doesn't even matter this idea of enlightenment or anything. All that matters is that, you, that you're happy, really. That you're free to be as you are. So this, but this, this can happen like a, like these laughters or these cryings, like when this is shift happening, like something's being let go of, and then suddenly you're like, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can still carry on talking with laughter or not. Don't worry. I'm a triple Gemini, I can go for it all the time. Anybody else have anything?